Fancy. This is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I'm wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today I'm bringing you a little bitty book haul. This is only eight books here that I got in the month of May, um, but I need to haul them now because I have a thing about not uh, wrapping up or discussing books that I've purchased until after I've hauled them, and I read one of these last month, so it's going to be in my wrap-up, um, and I'm planning on reading another one of these for a readathon this month. In terms of what I have here, I actually have three new books um, from Barnes & Noble, one, two, three, four used bargain one dollar books, and one ARC. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the one I already read. A little bit of backstory, um, you may know that I've been sort of wandering around in the dark trying to find the graphic novels that I'm going to like and sort of struggling with it. I've gotten to a point where if it looks like I found something that I might really like, I get very excited about it. Um, and so I saw this on a recommendations list of graphic novel new releases, and I thought I would check it out. It is in fact a manga. This is The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 1, with Story and Art by Nagabe. It does have a subtitle. I believe the subtitle is in Irish, and I have no idea how to pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. I do think this is influenced by Irish fairy tales or folklore of some sort, but I'm not aware of exactly what that influence is. This was my first time reading a manga, and I don't think this is a particularly typical one, but I really liked it. I picked this up because it was supposed to be a kind of quiet, dark, whimsical fairy tale thing, um, and I said, yes, please, that sounds like it's for me. It's very short, it reads very quick, I read it in one sitting as soon as I got it. I'll be talking about this in my wrap-up, so I won't be talking about it here, but know that I did like this enough that when the second volume was released later in the month, I went out and got this one as well. I'm saving this to read during the Getting Graphic readathon that's happening later this month. I'll link the announcement video so you can check that out. And then the other thing I bought new this month was Passing Strange by Ellen Clagis. This is one of the Tor.com novellas. This is fairly substantial though, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't object to something physically this large being called a novel. I don't know though. But I read this author's short story collection, Wicked Wonders, from NetGalley. Review is coming soon, I promise. I'm still working on that. But I liked it enough that when I finished reading that book, I ran out and bought this novella. This is historical fantasy set in San Francisco in 1940. I think it features some queer female characters, and I may also end up reading this one this month um, for a challenge for a different readathon. We'll see. So then on to my used one dollar bargain finds. Um, the first one I have is The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin. I feel like this is fairly self-explanatory. Um, one dollar Le Guin, who could say no? And then next I have The Hollow Kingdom by Claire B. Dunkel. I, I have no idea if I'm saying that right, but this is a young adult, I think it's a fey fantasy novel. Um, this is one that Goodreads recommends to me a lot, and I never pay particularly any attention to it. I've never gone out of my way to seek out this book, but when I saw it for a dollar I thought, why not? I think this is the first in a trilogy, but I don't know if it stands on its own within the trilogy or not. This is sort of older YA, back when young adult novels were this long as opposed to like that long. And this is from, when was this published? 2003. So these have been around for a while. Next I have two mystery novels. I have The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie and The Weed That Strings the Hangman's Back. These are both by Alan Bradley and they are the first and the second books in the Flavia de Luce mystery series that um, I have seen getting, you know, a lot of praise from people I follow on booktube. This is a well-loved mystery series. I believe the protagonist is a precocious young girl, and that really appeals to me. Um, I'm hoping to get into some new mystery series at some point, so I found the first two in this series for a dollar each, and I grabbed them. And then the final book here I have is an ARC that came from the uh, bookstore where I volunteer. This is The Reluctant Queen by Sarah Beth Durst. This is the second book in her um, Queens of Renthia series, which is going to be uh, an adult fantasy trilogy. 
I read the first book, Queen of Blood, also in ARC form, and I enjoyed that enough to be interested in continuing with the series. Actually, that review video where I reviewed that book and one other was my first double review video that I did. I've done more of those since and I've gotten better at them. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it's one of my better review vi videos, but inexplicably it has become one of the most popular videos on my channel, which I find interesting because the two books I was reviewing in that video were not necessarily incredibly hyped books. So with the note that it was my first time trying the double review format, I think I've gotten better at it. Since then I will link you to that review so you can hear what I thought of the first book. This is a series that I'm not overly invested in at the moment, but I thought it had a lot of potential to grow. So there we are, these be the books. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you're planning on reading of these, what you think. Um, anyhow, I hope you're having a nice day. That is all. Bye for now.